You may have heard it said that speed kills. This isn't really true. The only thing that speed by itself kills is your gas mileage. Most cars get more miles per gallon at 50 to 55 miles per hour than at 65 to 70 miles per hour. What really kills people is failing to adjust speed to conditions. It's the surrounding conditions that determine how fast you can safely drive. Like how far ahead we can see. It takes us four seconds to stop a car. This means we've got to be able to see the road, anything that may enter it, and have an alternate path of travel into which to steer at least four seconds ahead. If we can't, we've got to slow down until we can see four seconds ahead. How fast can you safely drive here? Straight road, dry surface, good visibility of the road ahead. Whoops, didn't see him. Would you have been able to stop in time? If you were traveling 55 miles per hour, your total stopping distance would be well over 200 feet. That's over 100 feet beyond the car. You can have the best brakes and the greatest reaction time in the world, but first you have to identify the problem. So at 55 miles per hour, it will take over 150 feet to stop after you apply the brakes. What if you are only going 45 miles per hour? Better, but not good enough. In fact, if you were going any faster than 35 miles per hour when you first saw this car, you couldn't keep from hitting it. That's right, the car is a little more than 100 feet away, and that's about the distance it takes to stop at 35 miles per hour. You're just coming over the top of a hill and see this. The driver behind can't see it and doesn't expect you to slow down. If your window's down, give a hand signal. If it isn't, you don't have time to roll it down, so what do you do? In a situation like this, the best thing is to tap your brake pedal a few times quickly. That'll flash your brake lights and warn the driver that something's up. He may not know what it is, but he'll be prepared if you slow down suddenly. What signs do you have here? What about now? The cars were there, but you may not have seen them because they didn't have their lights on. Generally, cars without headlights on can only be seen at distances of 2,200 to 2,500 feet. Now, ask yourself this. If you couldn't see them, how could they see you? If they can't see you, what's to keep one of the drivers from turning in to one of these driveways? Up to now, we've been talking about other people and what they're telling you. But communication is a two-way street. Others tell you, you tell them. One thing you can tell others is where you are. Your headlights are a way of doing this. On dark or rainy days, your car can blend into the landscape. You can see how much your lights help. With headlights on, a car can be seen from almost twice the distance, nearly a mile away. Based on the Canadian experience, driving with headlights on during the daylight hours, even on sunny days, can reduce the probability of a fatal frontal crash by as much as 28%. Actually, on a sunny day, with headlights on, a car can be seen at a distance of up to 4,700 feet, nearly twice as far as they can be seen without headlights. Another time headlights help other drivers see you is just before dark or just after sunrise. There's no magic hour. Whenever you begin to have trouble seeing others, assume they have trouble seeing you. Always make sure you use your headlights. Your parking lights are hard to see and can make it difficult for other drivers to judge how far away you are. 